Some Canadians seeking pardons for possession of cannabis say the government is letting them down. Now, the drug has been legal in this country since 2018. A program to expedite pardons was introduced the following year, but the Federal Parole Board says many of the 1,300 applications it received were ineligible or incomplete. Now, in 2022, an amendment passed in the House of Commons. It gave the government two years to sequester all possession records, meaning that we'd meaning they would not show up on criminal background checks. Well, time is running out. The deadline for completion is November, and advocates say that they're worried the deadline will not be met. So more on this, I want to bring in uh, Jack Lloyd. He's a lawyer who specializes in cannabis-related cases. He's also the president of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws in Canada. Joining us tonight from our Toronto studio. Welcome, Jack. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So what was your reaction uh, to news from the Parole Board uh, of Canada that only, what is it, 845, I'm reading, pardons for cannabis possession have actually been granted under their program? Uh, well, it was not one of surprise. Uh, the, the program was flawed uh, to begin with. Um, and as I've said uh, since it was first introduced, they really should have introduced a program of expungement, which would have solved this. The sequestration program that you've referenced uh, is an attempt uh, to sort of find a middle ground between expungement and um, uh, uh, a, a pardon, but ultimately that's proving ineffective, largely because the way that courthouses, police forces, and federal, provincial, and municipal governments store these records is uh, extremely varied. So it's very difficult to compile all of this. So I'm not surprised that not very many of these have gone through. You know, given the fact that uh, cannabis is now, it's legal in Canada, it's been uh, some time since I've thought much about what it means for somebody who has this on their record. Because of course now, uh, those things that have resulted in a record for them, uh, that just wouldn't be the case. So, so, so for somebody who, just paint a picture for us, what are the challenges facing those who still have this uh, on their record? Well, there are thousands of these out there. The, the real challenge is that when you apply to the Parole Board of Canada for a record suspension or a pardon, as we call it, you need to provide all of the records from court when this finding of guilt and conviction were registered. And often that's next to impossible. These are records maybe that happened in the 1980s uh, or, or even earlier, uh, all the way through uh, until legalization. Uh, it's very difficult to track that information down. So that's what the Parole Board of Canada means when they say that, that uh, some of the applications were incomplete. They simply, a person can't find it. So often they know that they have a conviction for simple possession of cannabis. They have no idea where any record of it exists. And frankly, even the, the Canadian Police Information Center, da Center database, CPIC, that's the RCMP's record database, often it's not in there either. And so, so it's this, uh, it's this bizarre system in which it's very difficult to actually receive a pardon for many of these convictions. And that's why an expungement program, which is authorized under the Criminal Records Act, really makes more sense. No, no one can tell why the federal government isn't doing that, but they're not. Right, and so if you have a, a, a possessions uh, record, a possession record, pardon me, how's that affecting someone's everyday life? Uh, well, certainly uh, it can, prohibit your ability to live in certain forms of housing, certainly government-assisted housing, it's a, a significant hurdle. It can limit your ability to travel, uh, especially to countries like the United States of America and uh, Japan and some countries in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, and it can also have very significant effects on your ability to find work. So if it's showing up on a record and you want to work for Uber or uh, any other workplace that requires a criminal background check, it can act as a complete bar. So you're advocating for uh, expungement. Uh, expung am I saying that right? Expung Ex expungement, that's right. So it's expungement. section, <laughs> section 6.1 of the Criminal Records Act. Yeah. It's already law. It would be the easiest thing in the world uh, for Parliament simply to order that and it would solve this problem. Uh, instead, they've introduced what they call a streamlined pardon system, uh, which basically means it's less expensive to apply 
uh, to get the pardon, but for most of the people that are seeking the pardon, it's still uh, really burdensome. It's difficult to access. Many of them are already vulnerable to begin with, so a, a great many persons of color, uh, indigenous people, uh, people with um, who haven't had access to uh, higher education, they really struggle with the paperwork. And so the streamlined program doesn't work for them. And that's why we're not seeing a, a lot of adoption or use of the program. Yeah, and so we're seeing 845 pardons granted to this point. The deadline is November. Do you got any sense of numbers that have to be reached for them to actually complete this by November? And what are the chances if they continue down the path that they're going? <laughs> They're going to need to go to every little courthouse in the country and track down records since 1959 <laughs> in order to accomplish this. So I think that there is no possible way for them to comply with the mandate this legislation set. So I, I don't think they will meet their deadline. Oh, expungement. I expect to hear you saying more and more of that in the coming months, Jack. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I do think it's the simplest and most sensible way to move forward. It would solve all of these problems and would actually help all of the people that are affected by this, this uh, historically problematic piece of legislation. Jack Lloyd, a lawyer who specializes in cannabis-related cases. Jack, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.